St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Our celebrant today is the Auxiliary Bishop of the Central Region of the Archdiocese of Toronto, the Most Reverend William McGratton. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Today's televised Mass is made possible by a contribution from an anonymous don donor from Ottawa. This Mass is offered in thanksgiving for the successful completion of a business transaction. We know that this televised Mass brings meaning to the lives of thousands of Canadians across our land and they join with me in thanksgiving for the gift of this Mass. My brothers and sisters, let us first acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. Now after the death of Jehoiada, the priest, the officials of Judah came and did obeyance to the king. Then the king listened to them. They abandoned the house of the Lord, the God of their ancestors, and served the sacred poles and the idols. And wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem for this guilt of theirs. Yet he sent prophets among them to bring them back to the Lord. They testified against them, but they would not listen. Then the Spirit of God took possession of Zechariah, son of the priest Jehoiada. He stood above the people and said to them, Thus says God, Why do you transgress the commandments of the Lord so that you cannot prosper? Because you have forsaken the Lord, he has also forsaken you. But the officials conspired against Zechariah, and by command of the king, they stoned him to death in the court of the house of the Lord. King Joash did not remember the kindness that Jehoda, Zechariah's father, had shown him but killed his son. As he was dying, Zechariah said, May the Lord see and avenge. At the end of the year, the army of Aram came up against Joash. They came to Judah and Jerusalem and destroyed all the officials of the people from among them and sent all the booty they took to the king of Damascus. Although the army of Aram had come with few men, the Lord delivered into their hand a very great army because they had abandoned the Lord and the God of their ancestors. Thus they executed judgment on Joash. When the army of Aram had withdrawn, leaving King Joash severely wounded, his servants conspired against him because of the blood of the son of the priest Jehoiada, and they killed him on his bed. So Joash died and they buried him in the city of David, but they did not bury him in the tombs of the kings. The word of the Lord. Forever I will pledge my love for my servant. Forever I will pledge my love for my servant. I have 
made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David. I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Forever I will pledge my love for my servant. Forever I will keep my steadfast love for him. And my covenant with him will stand firm. I will establish his line forever, and his throne as long as the heavens endure. Forever I will pledge my love for my sin. His children forsake my law and do not walk according to my ordinances. I will punish their transgression with a rod and their iniquity with scourges. Forever. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Jesus Christ was rich, but he became poor to make you reach out of his poverty. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, No one can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Therefore, I tell you, do not be worried about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, or what your body, or what you will wear. It is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are they not of more value than they? And can you and of, can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, Will he, not be, will he not much more clothe you, you little of faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all of these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. 
So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. The Gospel of the Lord. Do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. These words of instruction, I think, are words that give us a sense when we are filled with this emotion of anxiety that many times we need to ask ourselves, do we worry and are we filled with anxious thoughts? To live in the present, we are sometimes burdened by the past and preoccupied with the future. So what Jesus is advocating for us, his followers, is that we need to abandon not our life's responsibilities, but to seek and to understand his presence here and now. The temptation for each of us is to become preoccupied with the things of this world, things that sometimes we place before us as having greater priority than God. And so therefore, he says, when we do this, the temptation is to be filled with this sense of anxiety and of worry. The teaching of the gospel is one that is perennially found within Jesus' own instructions throughout the gospels. It is to see every moment, everything that we experience as a gift from God. Everything that we receive and so he used the example of the gift of creation, that everything is from the hand of God. And as the birds, the lilies, the grass of the field are provided for, should we not, as God's creatures, God's gift, also trust and open our lives to receive as creation does? And I think that is often the great call for us as Christians is to live and to see our life first as receiving from God and not one of grasping and seeking for more, but allowing our hearts and our lives to receive the fullness and the gift of God's creation and the gift of life that he bestows on each of us. When we receive, we are people who are filled with a sense of gratitude and as Christians, when we receive from God, we see first with the eyes of God's gifts. We see his goodness first, and therefore we can begin to trust in God. For the message of the gospel today is to place our trust and our confidence in God, and not to place it in the realities that are simply before us each and every day, but that we trust that God will provide for each of us in our cares and in our life. The gift of prayer, the gift of the Eucharist, allows our hearts to receive and to trust once again in the gift of God's presence that we celebrate as Christians. Confident that we can entrust all our needs to our loving God, let us now offer to him our prayers of petition. For the clergy and those vowed to religious life, that by their example they may help to inspire the faithful to entrust their lives more fully to God, we pray to the Lord. Lord For the nations of the world, that their teacher, their leaders, may focus on the true meaning of the needs of those who cannot help themselves. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the victims of human trafficking, that they may be freed from their captives and brought to safety, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For each of us, that we may continue to put our trust in our loving God, in both the major and minor events of our lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord and for those who have died, 
that they may have the experience of perfect peace in the joy of God's kingdom. For them we pray to the Lord. Lord our God our Father, we entrust our needs and the needs of those we love into your hands, and we make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right with us. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. You are holy indeed, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church throughout, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Benedict our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Formed by divine teaching and at the Savior's command, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of that peace. Of the world, grand. Of 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those of you at home, join me in this prayer for grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace has brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. Amen. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, the divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. Our thanks to an anonymous donor from Ottawa, Ontario, whose generous contribution made the televising of today's Mass possible. On behalf of Father Bush, Father Coots, Father Fitzpatrick, Father Donovan, Father Lynch, and all of us here at Daily Mass, our best wishes for a restful weekend, and we'll be looking for you all again come Monday.